Hello folks, welcome along to the vlog. So it's going to be a bit of a short-ish one today, maybe 10 minutes or so. Uh, and we're going to be prepping up the fermenters on the pilot kit so we can start to use it of course. So for cooling the fermenters we're going to use some spares out of this Cornelius Classic 1000 cooler. There are other types of uh, cellar cooler if you like. We're using the Maxi 310s and another style here to cool the fermenters. But what we want out of them is the coils. So when we're cooling the liquid down and pumping glycol around our cold room, we don't need the coils in there. And the coils look a little bit like this. Oh gosh. So this is kind of, here's one I made earlier, kind of thing. So that is going to be the cooling assembly, which goes in there. Made out of stainless steel they are. We've got one here, in its raw form if you like. So that is it. I'll just pop that there so you can see it. So what I've decided to do with these, is send them in through the lid. They're easy to clean because they're stainless and uh, we can just put some Persid in the fermenter, shake it around and that'll clean the stainless for us as well. Um, but I want to make sure that they're fully immersed in the beer when we brew. So we're going to expand these bad boys a little bit and then to get the beer out, because I don't want to be messing around with siphons in the brewery, we're going to install one of these cheap taps. This one came free from Keg Kingdom a while back. I think Matt sent me a few bits. Much obliged, sir. So we're going to put a tap on the bottom and we're going to put a cooling coil on the top. And then we'll be connecting that to the cooling system via these two John Guest fittings like quit. And then, of course, the whole assembly will plug in to our existing cooling um, assembly which is going to run off of these pipes here we don't have everything yet though we're still waiting for the postman to deliver a few things so this section of the um, build isn't going to be done today uh, and then for all of the STC's and the controllers what I will be doing is hopefully putting a new face plate on this old control panel which we touched on briefly last week and uh, installing all the STCs on there that's the plan but that's another job as well for another day so I'm going to stick on the tripod and we'll get to work on this fermenter so the plan here is first of all we'll install cooling coils into the lid so on these lids this is a 60 litre bucket by the way and I bought them from eBay I don't remember the seller and it was kind of 2018 so I can't tell you where they were from exactly but if you just search on eBay 60 litre food grade bucket you might find some so um, on these lids there are two little kind of circles one there and one there on opposing sides on this little um, ridge in the lid so I'm going to drill a nine millimeter hole in each one of those and conveniently that nine millimeter hole is about half a millimetre smaller than the coils. I might have to make that 9.5. Anyway, that will be going in there, that's not a problem. And then I want to expand these coils so they reach right down into the bottom of the tank. And I've not kinked one of these yet, but there's a first time for everything. So I'm just not taking a pipe bender to them I'm just carefully 
pressing them down. I'm not bothered about them having a little bit of a funny shape or anything like that. I just want to avoid pinking the steel. So we're just going to open, open these up like this so that when it's in the bucket the coils aren't sat above the top of the uh, top of the beer. We want them fully submerged so that they get all of the heat transfer and the liquid. Right, we're looking pretty close at that. It needs to go a bit more. So yeah, there's a big risk that I'm going to kink one of these at some point. That one's already started kinking on the back there. So I just have to be maybe a little bit more careful. Maybe that's as far as we're going to go with him. And maybe we just bend that a little bit further up, up the way. And I think that kind of, if we get the shot, that will kind of be in the right area, just about. We can play about with it anyway when we get the uh, get the lid on. So let's have a look if we can get this through the holes. It was fairly easy last time. Just a nine millimeter hole, and then because the pipe is about nine and a half mil. It gives a little bit of a nip onto the plastic and kind of holds everything in place for us. Yes. There we go. That looks about perfect. So we just need to put a couple of fittings on and then you get a plastic bar with the, um, the cooler. So I've just installed that so I've got like a handle to grab hold of on the other one. I think we'll do the same with this. So there we go, I'm happy with that. So we'll just pop that to one side for now. We'll bring this bucket up onto the side. And then what we're gonna do next is install our little tappy poo on the front. So we've got like a handle cut out here. And uh, I'd like the tap to be directly beneath that. And I'm not really using a hole saw or anything too technical. I've just got one of these 20mm spade bits. Actually, it's really quite blunt as well. So not ideal for the job. Uh, this handle turns the other way, funnily enough. Never mind. So, just eyeballing it in the centre. Not too high. That'll kind of do. And then we're just going to go in and drill this hole and take this plastic out. There we go. And then the simple bit, or the most difficult bit should I say, is actually cleaning the swarf out this hole here and just embiggening it a little bit so we can actually get the tap in camera dive there so I was just saying that the the tap is probably closer to the 22 mil diameter and the hole we've just put in here is only 20 so we're just going to use a standing knife blade to kind of trim it all up actually now I've put that hole in as well it looks a little bit too close to the bottom but I'm sure we'll be fine as you can see there that didn't quite want to go into the hole so we're just carefully nipping away at the plastic it's HDPE so it is relatively soft and well, really easy to cut actually there we go so that's pretty much big enough and um, I haven't actually got any washer or anything on here so I'm just taking a, a 316 back nut this is 
uh, half inch BSP. These are available on eBay. I got a bag full of them for about four or five quid. Uh, really handy for this kind of job, I think. So we're just going to kind of drop the tap in there. Now I don't know what I've used this tap for before, but there's a little bit of residual PTFE tape on there, and that is more than enough to kind of just hold it in place. I think that will prevent it from leaking, should I say. So we're just going to put that back nut on, on the inside. It will go on. Bit of riveting viewing for you folks here. Contain yourself. I know it's fantastically intriguing. Right, so we've got that on just about there. And then we're just going to tweak it hand tight and then just hold the nut in position on the inside and then rotate the tap just so it's kind of at one and six yeah it is a little bit low a little bit lower than I should have had it really but we can live with that and then there we go we now have a stainless steel tap installed in the bottom of a plastic bucket with cooling coils that we can drop into the top and we can sanitize the whole shebang with one hit and if I so desired or if you indeed did I don't think there'd be anything wrong with installing maybe a spray ball in the center and then you could recirculate acid around and around to clean the whole thing instead of having to stand up and shake it when it's full of uh, full of cleaner sanitizer so that would kind of live under there like this if you can see that and that would be more than enough uh, to, to clean the inside if you hook that up to one of the Clark pumps that I use for CIP in the brewery Right, well that's uh, that's pretty much it for today. Like I said, it's just going to be a short one because uh, we've got a few other things to do, a bit of cleaning up to do, and I'd like to get some recipes out so I can brew again this week and uh, really get a production pipeline on the go and fill the new fermenters that we've got. So I, I'm going to wrap it up from now, but we'll definitely come back tomorrow and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what beers we're going to brew on the pilot kit and what beers we're going to be putting into um, the recommissioned fermenters. So we'll see you then. Cheers.